All right, hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I know this isn't exactly what I really had planned out. Um, I did say I wanted to sort of do a trailer analysis, but it's really hard to do because I'm not used to the whole setup and everything like that. Um, like I can make this full screen, but then it's full screen on mine and my monitor, and I'm actually the full the full screen on my main monitor here because I'm using HDMI for uh, the capture signal to the capture card and it thinks that HDMI is the primary video output um, over DVI but anyway I just wanted you guys to get the main the main gist of everything of what I wanted to do alright we're gonna be doing a trailer analysis of uh, going through the trailer itself right here and I'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts alright now it's important to note before all right, I know this this video is pretty anticipated. All right, but it's important to note before I start. Please stop saying this is actual in-game footage and this is really what the game is going to look like. All right, this is a conceptual prototype. It is not in-game footage. All right, this is not a representation of what the actual game will look and play like. All right, this is simply think of a conceptual prototype as like a target render alright a target render is what the last Mirror's Edge video was it, it's just a it's a rendering of a video it's not in a playable state but it gives the developers a good idea of what they want the game to look uh, to look like it plays um, with the conceptual prototype think of it as a target render but it's a playable target render alright so everything you guys are gonna see it's still in the building blocks alright it's basically untextured and it gives you a sense of idea of what they're attempting to do, but the animations are going to look different. Of course, they're going to they're kind of probably make her look a little bit more realistic. And there's just all this stuff that they have to add in first. All right, so a conceptual prototype is more or less a target render, but in a playable state. So it is not it is not a representation of what of what the final game will look and play like. I wish people would stop saying this is the actual game. This is the actual game. This is the actual game. Yes, it's in a playable state, but this is the game's going to look much different and Faith herself is going to have um, a different form, different forms of animation and stuff than what we're seeing in this trailer, all right? So, it's I it, it, I was a bit disappointed in the beginning because um they didn't show much and I was expecting to see gameplay, right? And I was really disappointed because they just didn't show much. And then I read this thing over here. Let's go to mirrorsedge.com. Right, I'm going to read it to you guys. I read this. No. And it made me feel a lot better. All right, So you can go to this website anytime. It gives you the update. The, the, um, the senior producer, her name is Sarah Jansen. All right, she left a brand new... Um, you know, a, a little a little note here, right? And she left it in beginning here for when the first Mirror's Edge was out. You know, she, she talked about the vision and what they want to do and what their plans are, all right? And she left a new, mo a new note. So I'm going to be reading this to you guys. Uh, and this made me feel a lot better. And this kind of understands why she, uh, or why they, the game developers uh, just showed as much as they did, all right? So it says, hi. It's been a full year since we revealed that we are indeed making a new Mirror's Edge game here at DICE. I wanted to let you know that the game is progressing nicely, and I think you're going to love it. I know many of you probably wish we would have shown more of the game, but we're still pretty early in development, and our passionate core Mirror's Edge team is working full is working full on to make the best game possible. Mirror's Edge is all about fluidity, physicality, and movement. We want to make sure we we evolve the game and faith in a way that gives you an exciting new player experience. We want the game to be accessible enough to embrace new players while at the same time reward the skilled player. We are com we are also committed to provide the best first-person close combat in the world. Advanced combat that is in integrated into into an improved fluidity of movement. Excuse me. These are not small undertakings, but they are challenges that we are up for. I am fortunate enough to play the game that we are building every day, and I cannot wait to share it with all of you soon. And I and I will. I can't wait to share it with you all. We'll share it with all of you and soon enough I will okay excuse me I, I'm, I'm gonna be messing up here because it's early in the morning and, uh, and and I'm just tired all right the way that the team has reduced all the little obstacles of playing the first game while adding a bunch of innovative stuff makes it an extremely thrilling experience the uniqueness of the Mirror's Edge universe is still there but with a new and fresh feel to it 
We're also dedicated to let you know more about both Faith and the world that she is part in this time around, but more about that later. Thanks for all the feedback, questions, and love that have come our way during the past year. It's our fuel to keep going and never give up on what we have what we have set out to achieve. Keep it coming. You'll be hearing more from me soon. I, I really like that. You'll be hearing more from me soon. So it looks like we're going to be hearing more um, regarding Mirror's Edge before the next E3, which is going to be pretty awesome. Maybe it's going to be another developer diary. Maybe it's actually going to be gameplay. We don't know. But I read that. And it made me feel a lot better because I understood, you know. They're not ready to show the game yet because the game's not even ready to be shown yet, all right. There is no actual gameplay. They're probably still working in the conceptual prototypes, and that's the state that they are in. Um, I was watching an IG and Rewind theater for, you know, the new trailer, and uh, Ryan McCaffrey um, was saying that this is more or less a prog progress report. This trailer right here is a progress report for uh, the actual game, and I could more or less agree with him, all right. But this is pretty cool. Um, before we go on in the trailer, that she did leave some new gameplay art here. We have the concept art from you know that 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 was revealed before the actual show. Okay, so this is concept. This is not in-game art. This is again, it's it's concept art. So if you don't know concept art, that's a problem. But there's a lot of bold colors here. We see the yellows. We see the reds. Uh, we see you know some oranges up here. We see a lot of buildings in the background and pretty much her outfit, her new outfit. And uh, new shoes, as you can see, it goes all the way down there, and it kind of uses a depth of field effect within the art itself, and uh, some cool stuff right here. So really, really unique architecture, and it's going to be really clean, just like the first game. There's another piece of art here. We got a new look at the Pursuit Cops. All right, so if you played the first Mirror's Edge, there were Pursuit Cops later on in the game that basically chased after you, and, and the police force learned how to you know, tr train them so they can go after the runners. I guess these are the new uh, pursuit cops. As you can see, the city police force is back right here on this patch, the city police force, and uh, the number two, all right? But these are the new pursuit cops. This guy vaulting over. Again, he's wearing white. He had the red, red stripe here with the black, and it's kind of all, you know, it's all pretty cool. He has this nice little helmet here to protect him when he falls. I really, really love the art style this time around. Before... Before the the original Pursuit Cops, and here I'm going to go on Google and show you guys who don't know because the original Pursuit Cops look like um, hockey players. They did. Here, Mirror's Edge Pursuit Cops. All right, these were the original Pursuit Cops with their with their little masks right here, and um, you know they they would run after you, and as you can see, look, they, they I mean, they almost look like like sports players. Some more concept art. So, and that's what they were before. They ran around. They had tasers, and um, you know th that was it. They, they are pretty annoying too because if they tased you, you would slow down and you'd be almost immobile, and you wouldn't have uh, you know it, you you wouldn't be able to to run away from them. So, they were incredibly hard to take down. Once you master it, like like I have, you can actually take these guys down, and they just dodge all like almost all your attacks. But if you're quick and you dodge their attacks, and you you know kick, kick them in the leg, kick them in the face, and you know do a bunch of combos and stuff like that, you can actually take these guys down. But those were the original pursuit cops, which were a pain in the ass unless you learned how to master the game and you can actually defeat them that way. But that is a look at the new pursuit cops. Much more agile looking like, and I like again. I love the art style here. It's much more futuristic, and uh, I think it the game really has that going for it. It's still white, still clean, and still really fits in the city itself. All right. Now here we have a look at a rendering of the city. All right. I want to say this is in game because it looks like in game. However, I'm not exactly sure. This may just be art, but um. Again, this is supposed to be the downtown part. It says right here in the URL, this is the downtown part of the city. All right, and they're probably not going to be naming the city just like the first game. They didn't name the city in the first game, so the city doesn't even need to name. It's just the city. It's supposed to be a cross between New York and Tokyo, so it's it's more of that style. But again, look at this architecture we have here. Red. We have some ads with blue. Um, Oranges in the background here. There's a strip of yellow and some reflections off of the the mirrors of the building right there. The sun. It, it's just it's incredible. It, when you really look at this, it, it, it's absolutely incredible. And um, you know th this 
uh, the, the first game was really grounded in reality in terms of its architecture. It felt like a city you could go to today because it wasn't so futuristic and everything was just more or less really clean and new. This one is more, much more futuristic and I think the game is actually better off within a, within a futuristic city um, like this one. So we got a nice futuristic city right here. Really looking forward to it and just exploring. I mean, look, th this looks like a parking garage right here. And uh, we'll, we'll just see, but pretty, pretty gorgeous. I think this is art, actually, because if we look off into the background, everything's not completely rendered correctly. So this is probably art. This isn't in-game at all. But still, this is a great, great um, um, look at what they're what they're going for with the architecture, and you know it's going to be gorgeous. Just imagine playing this in game in full 1080p, you know, just with the reflections and everything like that. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So I absolutely love the direction that they're going with the architecture. I think it's fantastic, and I think the more futuristic vibe is really going to help the game out in the long run. And I think it's going to actually give the developers more freedom to become as artistic as they really would want to. Um, so that's that's that. And pretty much, yeah, so this I read this and uh, saw these images and I just felt much better um, after, you know, being a little bit disappointed after not them not showing that much. But it's understandable, you know, I mean, if that's the state, if, if that's the state the game is in, then that's the state the game is in. And I said that they could take as long as they want, and they could take as long as they freaking want. I don't care. This kind of confirms my um, the, the the rumor that it was supposed to be coming in. I guess it was targeting a fall 2016 release date. Uh, so this sort of confirms it because if it was coming out next year, we would see gameplay, and the game would be much further out. So yeah, I, I'm expecting a 2016 release here. And uh, I think it would help the game out in the long run because 2015 looks like it's going to be hammered with tons of amazing releases. And if this game is going to have a shot at becoming Game of the Year or, you know, up there as one of the best games of the year, um, it needs to come out in, in a year where you're not having so much competition. I mean, just think of 2015. Batman Arkham Knight, Uncharted, The Order, Halo 5, you have like all these anticipated games that are coming out and I, I'm, af I'm afraid that this game, if it came, if it comes out next year, it would be left sort of like in, in the background and it needs to have its own time to shine. It needs to come out and be like, you know, it, it, it needs to make the, it, a huge impact. So they actually started selling Mirror's Edge shirts again, so you can go and buy a Mirror's Edge shirt if you want. Um, it's only these shirts available, so I'm going to wait till they get more. Um, before I actually go ahead and you know again buy apparel, but that's a good uh, that's a good look at the uh, at the website and the images and stuff like that. All right, so let's go play through the trailer here. Uh, if we go through the motions here, I'm just bring this. Damn it! Hold on. To make this, I just want to grab. I want to grab this stupid thing right here. There we go. All right. I want to grab this. Yeah, I'm going to move this trailer down to this track. There we go. All right, I'm going to make this bigger for you guys. All right, so the trailer opens with, the, of course, the Red Dice logo, which is very iconic for the Mirror's Edge brand, the red, the white. It starts off with this guy parkouring, and they're talking about the game. All right, and they're talking about they hire real parkour artists to show them about the moves so they can get the most real representation out there. All right, so you got this guy jumping. He jumps on a rail. He does front flips. Does more front flips. Climbs up. More front flips. Jumps. You can actually see. Look at a good a good look of his pink underwear right there. There you go. That's amazing. So might be a playable character in the in the in the, in the game when it comes out. So now he jumps and he hits the floor right, and the game transitions into actual gameplay right here all right so yes it's a conceptual prototype so look she doesn't even have like a full body scan at all it's only you know again it's it's nothing's really rendered so her arm is completely untextured and and it's just supposed to give you a look at the game all right so it opens up with conceptual prototype that is actually a new role before um and i'll show you be before because they actually use the same animation for one of the roles but this is a new role where you can actually just roll on your side and before she used to put her um before she used to put her hand you know right 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 in her face so you know it would break her fall and you know she wouldn't get hit but this is a new a new uh, role animation which may or may not hit the final product 
So good look at her, um, oops. Good look um, at her pants right here, the new the new runner pants. With the iconic black stripe. All right, moving on. So now she's running. All right, she's running and she scales this wall. And um, everything is just so much quicker. She has black fingertips too. Everything's just so much quicker. If we go back and we play this from um, you know the beginning right here, everything's just so much quicker. I mean, look at this. I mean, that, that that's just nuts. Everything is is just much. It's gonna be much more faster paced, and um, I think she's gonna move. You know, the first one. I think the maximum speed was 30, 30 kilometers. I believe that was the maximum speed that you went at. You couldn't go faster than than that in in the game. This one, they definitely sped her up a little bit. As you can, she just climbs and scales this wall with like no problem. So she just gets back up. So it's gonna be a much more faster faster um, experience this time around here. We'll take a look at her glove as she's, here's the new glove as she's, oh, she does have fingertips, all right. But new glove, she climbs up, all right, pretty cool, and uh, vaults up. And then she's about to jump, and, and this is a new mechanic, vaulting over the railing, all right. Before, in the original Mirror's Edge, she would just vault over this right here, and she would just, you know, hit the ground, right, because the game couldn't tell whether you wanted to vault and jump on the railing or just vault over the railing. And so it would it would just do vault over the railing unless there was like a box there where you can actually jump in and vault. So this one it's actually showing her she's vaulting on the on the railing and jumping. She hits see look how arm you can see the, the split right here at the end of her arm. Um she she jumps on onto uh, this next platform here. Alright and then she runs and here's a brand new mechanic all right they they kind of took this from assassin's creed 2 which in introduced it a year after Mirror's edge um this is a, a new mechanic allowing you to be play slide to the other side just like that so now you, now you can turn corners with poles which is an excellent excellent um i, I didn't even think of that but that is a great a great thing to add to the game and uh, I think that's going to help a lot of people out because before in the first one you have to okay drop drop down or you do a wall run, and then you jump on this um, on the stairs right here and then you would jump up. So now you can just freaking hang um, or slide up from the railing or, the, or just pull right here, slide to the other side, and and you can just keep your momentum. So great addition right here. If you can see she's running, she grabs the pole, she slides over. Good look at the motion blur here slides over all right and she's able to carry her momentum the new developers are like oh fuck that's awesome and then uh talking more about the game talking more about the game we got another look at gameplay here as you can see there's a there's a look at her hand when she's running all right and uh she's gonna make her way up to this pole right here she wall runs and just look at the speed difference, all right? I, again, like those of you who played the first game, this game just moves at a much faster pace. If we go back, all right, she's able to raw run. And look, she's not even that high from the ground, too. So, I mean, like I said, it's a conceptual prototype. So this stuff is going to be added in with physics, with gravity and all that stuff and how fast she falls. That's all going to be, like, changed. But she's running on the wall not that far from the ground. She jumps on the pole. She doesn't even rest, all right? She doesn't even rest when she when she gets to the pool. She just immediately starts climbing it like a monkey. <laughs> and the first one, you jump on the pole, and, uh, you know, boom, you get on the pole, and she stops for a bit and breathes, and then you would move up. And it was like a slow and steady thing, you know? It was like, okay, it was more grounded in reality. This one, she just freaking... She's, like, moving, like, at a million miles per hour, so it's much, much more quicker. It's definitely going to help that sense of adrenaline, all right? So she she freaking she grabbed the pole, get up there, she pulls herself up, all right? This is interesting. Run, see, look, run, um, run, see, run the bug right here, run the bug. Um, again, it's just, it's a conceptual prototype, so all this stuff is going to be added, all right? Probably going to texture that with something, I don't even know, but run, run the bug. Um... All right, she she ball runs and then jumps onto this sled. She's able to pull herself up once again. Pretty cool. 
All right, we get another another look here. She turns the corner, I guess, and uh, she's running. We still have the iconic ramps, all right? The ramps are back from the first game. This would allow her to get a little bit of a speed height when she jumps, and it would also sig signal her that, hey, she can jump onto the next ledge here or whatever. And you still have the, look, you still have the, 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 the ropes here, and it looks like they're, they're still going to keep the same style of, um, of the architecture. If we kind of go back here, I'm wondering how far I can go back. Here we go. Look, it's the same type of architecture, same type of style. You have the box here, and then you have the rope and just the tower and stuff like that. So it's the same type of style right there, which I really appreciate. Jumping, she jumps. She grabs the pole. All right, look, there's no there's no ground yet. She, she slides over to the other side. We get a first look at her shoes, all right, in this one. Take a look at her new shoes, all right. Much different from the first one. The first one... It was just red, and it had like a black little square right here, and it had it was a split toe shoe. All right, I forgot what they call I, I think they called them ninja style shoes or whatever, but it was a split toe a split toe shoe for for running, and it looks like they went away with that, and it's a more traditional type of shoe, almost like you know they slip on. They're still red. They still got the black stripe. They still got the you know the white right there, but they definitely changed up on um, the shoe style. And again, here's a, a good look at her pants, and she still has this um, this uh, elbow brace thing almost right here on her on her right arm. They still kept that, which I think is pretty cool. So, all right, so she's about to hit the ground now. Here is the original roll from the first game with the arm right there. They they still kept that, which is pretty freaking sweet. I, I'm glad, but they also added new rolls too. So I guess depending on the the height. Depending on how far she is from the ground, she's going to be doing different animation for when she, you know, breaks her fall. So, you know, we're looking. She's going pretty fast. You can see the intense motion blur on the screen right here. She hits the ground. All right. Again. And look, see, conceptual prototype in it. And she just loses, like, the motion blur just proceeds onto her, you know, everything around her. And also the bloom effects as well from, from the lighting and stuff. But she does the roll. All right, the iconic roll gets back up on her feet pretty quickly, starts running again. All right, this is also moved back because now you have this the sliding down ramps. She slides down ramps. All right, now you can look right here. Um, it actually it actually looks a little bit worse in the trail. If I do this at full speed, hold on. See, it almost looks in that instant. It almost looks like. Her legs are skinny. It's like, look, her whole arm is skinnier and her whole leg is skinnier. But if I stop it, it actually, you can actually see there, okay, there's some balance to the weight and stuff like that. So they did keep the roll back, or the, the sliding down the ramps back. Um, like I said, it's going to sexual prototypes that are probably going to beef her up texture and, you know, make sure that she actually looks and feels like a real person and not a, you know, cartoonish video game character. So she's running, jumps, slides down, all right. And then she just continues to run. All right. They don't show the sliding mechanic where right now she would just slide under. Or if we take a look, hold on. You take a look. She could probably wall run and then vault over here. But it's probably quicker to slide under. Let's take a little bit of a look back because I want to. I just want to see about paths and stuff like that. This probably isn't a way to go. I don't know. The game is going to be open world, so again, there's going to be multiple paths to do different things, and I they have to populate that open world with side content and uh, with interesting challenges and stuff in order to give it purpose. So she's running the developer switch, and they're talking about how amazing their experience is and how they want to have the game accessible to everyone. We go back, we have the iconic runner logo right here, and also over here in the corner, iconic runner logo. And here's right here a good look at the vault mechanic. It looks like they're going to bring those boxes back. We're looking at, the, at, at vaulting and stuff like that, so that's going to be pretty cool. And there's different ways, again. So she could turn left. I wonder what's left. We'll, I don't know, but I, wonder, I do wonder what's left. So she runs. She surveys the environment, and um, see some nice reflections right here on the wall. She surveys the environments, all right, and it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, um, oh, six right here, if we look down here, six, uh, seven, eight, so there's eight enemies. Now, if we look over here, this city actually looks very similar to what the first city was. 
with you know it looks like it's more grounded in reality but we saw from the art style the art style when they start to texture this environment when they start to put the ads in and they start to texture the buildings it's going to have a very futuristic vibe but just in the building blocks throughout this conceptual prototype it does look very similar to the first game and we could see right here that the game is still going to have a similar type of um i i guess i guess um shape to what the first one had the first one it was you know, it was like a it was like a city that made like a U turn. It, it, it had like a big U, and there was an ocean in, in the center. The ocean kind of went through to the docks. And here we still have, I guess, this is going to be water, and, and it, when it's all textured, and then we there's some docks over here, some more buildings. Like I said, the city itself is like a cross between New York and and Tokyo, Japan, and it's it's really it's really just similar to in that sense. So. Um, very metropolitan. It's going to be very futuristic, and I just it's going to be really interesting. But if we look from just here, it really does look similar to what the first game was like. And we still have the little, little dot right here in the, in the center of the screen, which if you want in the first game, you could remove it, and I imagine you could remove it um, again. This is the HUD for Mirror's Edge. For those of you who haven't played, this is the HUD. There is there is no HUD. It, it, it's so incredible to play this game without uh, any HUD. At all, but there is no HUD whatsoever. It's just a dot, so it makes some good use if you want to do like some some cool montages and you know make like a cool trailer or something like that. So, all right. So she surveys. She she jumps down. All right, she jumps down. She runs. Here's a returning move from the from the first game. We're gonna look. She she jumps and she smashes this guy when she, when uh, she comes down. That's actually a move from the first game. If you got high enough, you could jump on someone and take him out that way. So. She jumps. All right, let's go look at the jumping mechanic. The guy like doesn't expect what's going on. We look more. He turns around, and as here we can see, she just takes her leg and just smacks him on the ground. <laughs> All right, so pretty cool. Right there, gets right back up on her feet, and she just continues going. You can actually see the low res shadows right here. Like I said, this is like if they turned everything on low settings. Um, so you can see the the the, the pixely shadows right here um, on the game. So again, this is made with the Frostbite three engine, so you know it's gonna look really really awesome. We'll continue out more. She's running. The person's talking about the sounds for the game and with the combat more specifically. They're completely redoing the combat, which is good because the combat in the first game, in a lot of people's opinion, failed and it was really hard to master. I still to this day have trouble disarming certain enemy types all right there there's like certain enemy types like like the assault you know the guys with like assault rifles that i have like a hard time disarming and um it's it, it was very much you run in the first game you stop you wait for the guy to hit you with his gun then you press this the disarm button and this one it looks like it's going to be no you run take the guy out keep on running take the guy out keep on running it's not going to be stopping it's not going to be you running stopping taking someone out and then running again it's going to be an, you in a constant flow of motion which is excellent that's what that's what we need you know we, the combat in the first game i'm not afraid to admit it, it was a complete fail it was um it, it was very hard it was very hard to accomplish but they just didn't do a good job with it at all the game wasn't about engaging in combat it was about um, you know evading combat but sometimes once in a while you had to uh, you had to engage in combat if you wanted to progress because you know unless you were fast enough and you could just beat the enemies um, you know to the punch uh, you would have to take out some of the enemies through melee combat and it wasn't really I mean once again once you master it yes. But again, for for like a new player, for like even even an intermediate player, it's still a pretty difficult system. So they're completely redoing it, which is nice. So we take more a more look at combat. Here she's running; she's in a different part. We have a ladder right here as well. So ladders um, will be back in the game. Again, you can vault on on this little red thing and just jump over to that. So that vaulting mechanic is bad. Again, look similar architecture. We still have these electronic boxes right here, very similar to what the first game was. And uh, here she jumps down again. This guy is running to, um, towards her. This isn't a pursuit cop. It looks like it's just a normal police um, um, brawler. All right. So if we look, she jumps. All right. She jumps. She kicks him in the face with, with her leg right here. All right. And here we have a look at the outfits. Body armor, some red and some blacks, and, of course, the whites. All right. 
it transitions into a different enemy type. Hold on. All right. It looks like uh, here. I want to watch this whole thing just to see what she does. Okay, yeah, it just completely transitions over. So if we look at this, she kicks him in the face and she just keeps on running. And that guy's like, you know, kind of, um, he's just disoriented, if you will. All right, so then it transitions into a new enemy type. These guys look like they're more brawlers, more assault guys. You can take a look at their mask. They have like a bunch of like, looks like not really night vision, but um, some optic scopes. All right. And... Uh, here she's, um, if we take a look at what she's doing to this guy right here. It looks like, it looks like she's moving too fast. Okay, she takes his arm, she slaps him in the face, backs hands, backhands him. This <laughs> is pretty nice. This guy she kicks. She looks like she kicks this guy into this guy. Um, but I don't know if it affects, because if we, if we look at the, hold on. If we look at this, and look at the, look at this guy's mouth right here. And you can see, look, his nose is sticking through the mask of so this stuff is just not even complete yet, but... This guy's mouth right here is like, <laughs> but if we look, she kicks him into that guy, and I guess that it would it would take that guy and hit him towards the wall, and he would be preoccupied with that. Um, so yeah, she takes that, she kicks this guy. Here we have a look at her. I just want to stop it. Here we have a look at her extremely long leg, which actually splits into two as this guy's arm comes in between it. And uh, another brawler right here. These guys are casting those shadows as well. I'm trying to prove a point here that this is not actual, you know, that this is not an actual representation of everything you're seeing is final. And like I said, it's not it's not the true form of gameplay yet. This is just a conceptual prototype. It's a playable target render. This is what the game is supposed to look like it plays, all right? Of course everything is untextured. You guys get my point. So again, and then she does look almost like another kick it looks like. Again, this guy's face is hilarious. So, all right? She, here we gotta look at um, her taking this guy out. She get she gets this guy on his knees and she hits his face and slams it on her knee. It's pretty cool. And uh, she, she disarms him. He drops his gun. And here's the interesting part. Throughout this trailer, there has not been a single instant of her even having the option to pick up a gun, which further confirms the rumor that she, there will be absolutely no gunplay in this game and that it's just gonna be you doing combat. There's no guns whatsoever. Which is a nice, it's a, it's a risk, you know, because a lot of people are going to be like, well, who's going to use the gun? But it's, again, this is really true to what the first Mirror's Edge was. And, um, if you use, if you use guns in the first Mirror's Edge, I mean, like, I'm talking about, like, in every, every instant you got. Like, if you just wanted to, if you, instead of running to the objective, if you just wanted to kill, like, all the enemies, that's a problem. Alright, you should not be proud of yourself. This game is not about that. This game is about um, something new, a new, a new idea, a new vision in terms of gaming. You're supposed to be evading combat, um, and Fate's not a fighter, and she's not gonna. In this reboot, I guess she's not gonna be a straight up killer. She may not even kill a single person, but there is that. Um, taking a look more here, you have the gun. The gun scrolls over, and she, as she's getting back up to her look, um, to her, you know, to the gameplay camera thing. All right, here's another look at at, um, at her running towards an enemy. And here's a really cool comment, but I like this. All right, the guy's coming at with his baton. All right, it's, it's Aiden Pierce. Okay, imagine Aiden Pierce in his trench coat coming, right? So he's, so he's like, where's my sister? He's coming. She does a slide, and there's no longer... It, before, it was a sliding kick, all right? So she does a slide, and she freaking um, trips him. So if we take a look here... Look, she she, she takes her both legs. She, she kicks... If we see this in full motion, all right, that's the full motion. But but if we see it frame by frame here, she freaking kicks both his legs, you know, out from from the standing position. The guy trips and falls flat on his face, which is hilarious. And that's a, it looks like okay, if we take a look here, I can't see. This looks like very similar to to the pursuit cops before. All right, so this looks like um th this is the new the new pursuit cop enemy you can see his badge right here it's very iconic in his mask as well so but yeah that that's a pretty cool move before she wouldn't just kick him and kind of falls flat on his face before she would just you know kick him in the balls and the guy the guy would be hunched over and then she would just you know move on or you could combo into different things this one you can actually just kick their legs out they can fall flat on their face and then they're done which is freaking awesome so um we'll continue more all right, she's running. These guys are shooting at her. She vaults over the railing, all right? 
Again, look at her good look at her leg right there. Vaults over the railing, all right? You think, okay, she's going to slam on this guy, but no. Before she hits the ground, all right, she, it looks like she, she kicks him, then gets back on her feet, all right? So he's done. The other guy's shooting at her. She wall, she wall runs. She combos it into a wall run, and then runs, 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 and does the iconic kick. You, This is a move from the first game as well. You can actually wall run and do a kick. So she kicks this guy straight up in the face after a wall run, and then it goes into this 8-bit thing. Here's what it started. And then we take a look at her character model, alright? So this isn't early, this isn't the full character model, but this is an early concept footage um, of her character model. Again, they kept, they wanted to keep the glove. I don't, I like the glove she has now. I don't like this one. This one, this one looks weird. And uh, the shoes, I like the shoes she, she has now too. I mean, I, I like the, the only thing I like out of this whole outfit is, is her pants. I like her pants a lot in this one. Um... And this is pretty cool, but the, the, again, I, I I like I like her outfit overall. I think she, I think they did a good job on her outfit. I wish they kept the split toe with the shoe. That would have been cool, but no. Um, so they kept the glove, of course. The guys talk about how amazing the glove is. We have a, a look at concept art now. Again, here here's a cool new um uh, uh air vehicle right here. You can see that that again, it's a more futuristic game. So instead of helicopters, you're gonna have these gliders right here. All right, so cool little gliders, which is pretty cool. Um, looking at the architecture, I was trying to point out if there's anything similar to, um, you know, from from the first game, and I couldn't really point out much. But we see some, you know, huge buildings. We see the gliders. Here's another look at the gliders up here. I don't know what they're called. I'm just calling them gliders because here's a look at. Um, let me take a look back here. Some more character models. This is the guy who tattooed her eye. This we don't know who it is. Who is who is this chick right here in the corner? It could be Celeste. They could be, they could have Celeste returning. You have a more. It looks like another picture of Faith almost. More more character models. All right. So we have some blurred out character models here. We know this is the guy who tattooed her eyes, and we don't even know his name. This could be Drake, who was um um. There was two leaders for the runners. There was Mercury, who was who was basically your 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 leader, um, for for you know the the runners that that you know your your division I guess of the runners. You had Mercury, and then you had Drake. All right, you never met Drake before, who was the other who was the other you know runner leader. You never met him before in the game. So I'm thinking this might be Drake. Um, and again, we from the first game, what happened is that Mercury took Faith in after Faith broke into his his house and was trying to steal stuff. So and and Mercury offered to train her and stuff like that. So this might be Drake, um, or it might they might just completely remodel Mercury, and that might be Mercury. But I I really just don't know. But we have some more character models. This, this looks like Faith because of the tattoos and stuff. However, it may, it may not be cops. And again, we don't know who this is. I can make out that she has blonde hair and it's a dress. So it could be I don't. It, it could be a variety of people. It could be um you know it could be Faith's mom. It could be Celeste. I think it's more likely Celeste, but we, we'll just have to see if they bring back those characters. But we do have those characters back. You know who else this might be? This might be Jackknife, too. Jackknife had an almost similar look. So that might be Jackknife they might be bringing back. But um, it'll be interesting because they're talking about the... the, the we, we get our first hint at, at the story here, right? So more more talking about the, the character models. More outfits here. All these outfits, I'm sorry, look like crap. Like this one, like this looks like a wetsuit. Why? I'm glad they didn't use those. Look, she has like full boots here, and she looks a lot more tactile in these. And we don't know; these might be alternate outfits you could unlock throughout the game. So it might be able you can like change her outfit in the game. And there might be multiple outfits throughout the game. That would actually be pretty cool. And what I really wanted to do is for the multiplayer, I wanted the ability to customize and create your own runner and have an online open world game. So you can actually take your own. You know, um, character model. Choose the gender. Choose the hair color. Choose the type of hairstyle, and you know, choose everything like that. And you can make it a you know, customize the color palette and all that stuff with the character. But I hope that they would um, they could do that. So more look at the character models here. Again, these are these are all previous concepts. Some look at the shoes. Right here. All right. And then uh, it goes in. This is the. Um, producer, the senior producer. She is our hero, guys. She is responsible for what's going on with Mirror's Edge. All right. Thank thank you to her. All right. We, we love you. We love you, Sarah. So she is responsible for, for bringing us back the 
the great, the great, the great game that that we once knew, and making it an even better experience, and just making it more than it ever could be. So that's pretty cool. Also, they have really nice chairs. That, look at these chairs at Dice. Those are some pretty freaking awesome chairs. So, all right, she's talking about the game. She's talking about the the character model and what they wanted to achieve. And we get like a first sense of story in this trailer. Here we have um, the final outfit, I guess, and the, the character models are going through it customizing her and stuff like that all right we do get a we do get a look at what this the story is going to be like in in this and um they she, all all that, that that we heard is that it's going to be more about faith it's going to be more about what what why, why she belongs in this world and the first one the first one's story sucked all right it did it was the gameplay was so incredible and so immersive and so just unique that it overshadowed the story to the point where you would skip the cutscenes. And I'm ashamed to admit this, but the first time I played this game, I was so engrossed in the gameplay that I literally skipped all the cutscenes because I did not give a freaking shit about this shit story in the first game. And I need we need what we need from Mirror's Edge, if we're looking at making it the game of the year, it needs to have an emotional character driven adventure. One that's not afraid to go the dramatic route, one that's not afraid to to you know be brutal. And and you know it needs to be emotional too. We need to care about the people that that we're that we're meeting and stuff, and care about the whole city that we're living in. So we need that emotional storyline. And we don't know because all we know is that they didn't hire back the person who wrote the the first Mirror's Edge, which I'm really happy. You know, you know because because the story sucked. Like I said, the story was completely awful. All right, so. Going through. Okay, we have another look at the combat move here, all right? So she's running towards this guy. We have a we have a nice step the field effect right here, all right? So she's running. You can see in the background it, it goes into a depth of field effect because you're going into combat, all right? The guy stops. He's ready to hit him with, with, with her baton, all right? Or, or she, I'm sorry. He's ready to do a, a, a freaking punch to the face, all right? As he's going to punch uh, her... And this looks like this is another pursuit cop. Well, it says ERT something. Huh. All right, but he has the baton here. She kicks his hand away, which is like, whoa. You know, she kicks his hand away. Take a look here. Kicks his hand away, all right? He, he, he's like, oh, fuck. She punches, she punches him in the face. If we take a look at his bed. Okay, ERT2, all right? Huh, interesting. ERT2. Um. All right, she he's a he wants he goes to hit her with her baton. She dodges, grabs his hand, does a takedown, and basically gets this guy on the floor. And she just continues on throughout her way. So that's a cool look at the combat right there. It looks like it's gonna be much more brutal, much more in your face than the first game. And hopefully it is because the first game was so the first game was so static and there was no there's no dynamism at all throughout the combat. So I hope that they actually bring some dynamic flow to the combat in this one. So, alright. They're more working on the game. Here's another look at their character model. Again, I, I like this tank top. This thing is sexy, isn't it? Look at that. That's freaking hot. So, we got we got this nice leather right here. It looks like... I really like this outfit a lot. And we have like this... this this. It looks like almost a bag almost, but we don't know what's in this. What What, what is in this right here? It's obviously not ammo if she can't pick up weapons. So what what is in this? I guess just more more stuff to deliver. I mean, we just really don't know. The runners are supposed supposed to be couriers, but I'm sorry, this outfit is freaking sexy as hell. It's freaking awesome. So good look at her character model here, and again, she has the tattoos right there. Um, if we continue on forward, here we have another look at the city. We're still gonna have the the train, but if we look at the original trailer, the trains are much more like monorails mono right now, so much more futuristic tone. Look at the city, just so much architecture. All right, continuing on, the guy's working, he's engrossed. We take a look, we take another look at the first trailer. She's getting her tattoos again. The guy's talking, and and he says, "Yeah, this is a girl that actually tattooed her eye. Um, you do it for a reason. It's to make a point." So. Then we have a look at this, all right, which is, I want to say this is almost gameplay. I'm still not exactly sure, all right, because if we take, if we take a look at this, it's, uh, I want to say it's still part of the conceptual prototype before the open world, 
But if we take, just, just look at the scope. Look how much there is to explore. There's so much to explore. So, and by the way, how, how the hell did she get up here? Where did she come from? So, all right, so, she's, so she runs, and it, the trailer ends with a stylish jump off into the, the distance and fall flat on your face and you die. All right, and then that's the trailer. It goes into a depth of field effect. The sun, the sun blinds everyone, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, first to know and subscribe. So, overall, that's my trailer analysis. I guess you can say on the original Mirror's Edge, or, or I'm sorry, the original Mirror's Edge, the reboot of Mirror's Edge. Overall, I liked what I'm seeing. However, I just wish that they showed more. But after reading the trailer, or after reading, you know, this right here, this snippet, I now understand, and I'm now even more excited. All right, so. Don't worry. Um, overall, I'm really positive with what I saw. I think they're doing an excellent job, and everything I've seen, there's no gunplay. It's the hand-to-hand -hand combat looks brutal and looks dynamic, and this is truly. It looks like it's truly going to be the Mirror's Edge that that we all really wanted. So, I'll keep you guys in the know. If according to Sarah, it, she says you'll be hearing from me soon. Um, so. Hopefully that means before E3, that might be before the end of the year as well, if they're going to release a new trailer, if they're going to release a gameplay trailer, we just don't even know. But we'll see, all right, guys? You guys, um, I, I will, of course, cover any, anything that comes out, and i um, lo really looking forward to this game. And let me know what you guys thought. I would really like to know what you guys thought, and uh, I'll take a... Uh, I guess I'll see you guys later, all right? So that's my trailer analysis. I know I want to do something funny. I want to do something creative for this. But I just couldn't really think of anything. It made sense last year because last year I was it was like, you know, it was incredible because it was seeing a seeing that your favorite game after five years of it being absent and after not knowing if you're ever gonna get a sequel, just that, that level of ex excitement was inc just incredible. And you know, I wanted to do something funny for it and and I did and I did that, you know, that little skit right there, the little comedy skit with, with the heart attack. And uh, you know, it was totally unexpected and a lot of people loved it, but I really I really wanted to top it, but I just didn't know how to get more creative. So it's kind of my fault. But I thought, hopefully, this this will give you a good idea of my thoughts. Hope you guys will um, enjoy the enjoy the video. I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. I'm gonna go play some Battlefield Carbine and the Destiny Alpha. Bye.